Okay, welcome back. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. It's theCUBE. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm with my co-host Dave Vellante. We've got a really packed schedule, so we're going to try to go through really quickly. I just want to say, what really excites me about theCUBE is we go where the action is. And we're here at the uh, OpenStack Enterprise Forum, um, talking to all the thought leaders and the, and the people making it happen. And I got to say, Silicon Valley is an amazing place. We were just at the, I was just at the Mac 30th celebration, Saturday night. Just, Pure joy, hardware geeks talking old school, and all the activity around open source, open compute, open stack really is about innovation. And, and if the Homebrew Computer Club was around today, they'd be, they'd be playing in open stack, they'd be playing with open compute. So I personally think this is one of the most exciting areas. If it doesn't get screwed up by bureaucracy and payola, if the community can stay strong, OpenStack is totally a winner. That's my, my vote. I'm bullish on OpenStack uh, as well as Bitcoin and uh, open compute uh, projects. So uh, we're here with our next guest, Jonathan Bryce, Executive Director, OpenStack Foundation. He's, he's here to make it work. Thank you for joining us again. Um, you know, I was like being tongue in cheek on the, on the, on the whole uh, community thing, but that's a balance. So, Give us the update on the, on the uh, OpenStack Foundation, sure. where you guys are at, what are the milestones, the conversation here, what, what's the current state of the union yeah. for OpenStack? Yeah, so, so OpenStack as a project started three and a half years ago. The foundation is a little bit over a year old, and, and that was really, I think, a, a very big step in, uh, in, in kind of the growth and maturity of, of OpenStack, finding a long-term, independent, vendor-neutral home for it. And uh, um, you know the the interesting thing is that uh, that we've just wrapped up 2013, and we were putting together some uh, some basic stats and reports on on what, how OpenStack did in 2013, and key metrics like the number of people who contributed code, the number of people who contribute code every single month, the um, the number of people who have come to our design summits and our and our conferences and helped us plan out the OpenStack software, the number of companies who are offering products and services, they all doubled or more in 2013. And, and that's you know, pretty incredible when you think that the base that we were working from was already pretty large. So um, I think that, that you know, the, the state of OpenStack is we're still very much on the upswing, very much in the early days when, uh, when, when it's growing really rapidly and there's a lot of opportunity. And, uh, and I think what that speaks to is just the, the, the breadth of what OpenStack is and what it covers. You get a lot of politics now. I mean, obviously you have the big open, uh, the, the summit coming up, and there's very few slots on the keynotes. You guys went to a draw the ball for the draft <laughs> picks, yeah. right? Which is, you know, hey, <laughs> you, got to, you, got to, you got to take an approach. <laughs> I got to ask you, the balance, I mean, because you got to balance that, you want participation, you want to foster some organic growth, yep. and top-down participation, but at the same time, you don't want to have any tainted um, agendas, right? Yeah. So, how do, you, how do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, uh, it, it's a good problem to have in some ways, because what it, what it points to is, is the involvement that we have from so many people. Um, and, and from our perspective at the foundation, uh, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about how to make sure that everybody gets an equal opportunity at every, everything that we're organizing in the community. And this is, uh, this is something that, like you, know, you brought up, um, how we handle sponsorships at the summit. We have extremely high demand for, for those sponsorship spots, but we, we, our summits are, are really critical touch points for the community as a whole. So it's not about just putting on another industry event, it's about bringing the community together to get a lot of work done. And so we actually limit the number of sponsors that, that we have there. And, uh, and it's not about um, you know, how much you want to pay us, it's not about uh, if, if you're a big company, small company, foundation sponsor, that kind of thing. It's really about, um, you know, we, we try to make it a very fair process that opens yeah. up the opportunity for, for big companies and small companies to yeah. get in there and, and, and participate in it. And what's, what's really great is actually, um, you know, past headline sponsors have been companies like IBM, HP, Red Hat, Rackspace, Canonical. Um, at, at the summit in Atlanta, one of the headline sponsors is actually going to be Solid Fire. Well, you guys got a lot of transparency too. You got guys like us watching you, and then yeah. you got people who want, who care about not yeah. getting it screwed up by the old model of you know polluting these standards bodies with agendas and quid pro quos and rigged uh, rigged <laughs> activities. Yeah. Uh, so, but 
Dave and I always saw the Enterprise. Dave, I mean. So, Jonathan, I got to ask you. So, we were at uh, AWS uh, reInvent, and we had Jerry Chen on theCUBE. And we always, we always admonish our, our listeners, look, you have to dis distinguish OpenStack, the project, from OpenStack products and solutions. And that's very important. But notwithstanding that caveat, Jerry Chen was on, and we, he was just coming back from Hong Kong. And we asked him you know, how it was. And he said, well, let me summarize it this way. OpenStack is sort of all things to all people. AWS is one thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, to all people, is that fair? I think I think that again, you know, to, to my earlier comment, OpenStack is is a very broad technology, and uh, and it's and this is uh, you know somebody had said what is what is OpenStack? What is it yeah. trying to accomplish? And in, in the audience, and you know, my answer at a very high level would be that that OpenStack is putting an API on everything that that's, that runs in a data center, the compute, the storage, the networking. And it does that in a way that's pluggable. So if you're using commodity servers, if you're using traditional hardware, if you're using open compute, all of those things, there are OpenStack implementations running those. And then you find things like, you know, what I was mentioning earlier, where you have a Comcast set-top IPTV box that's that's powered on the back end by an OpenStack cloud, Sony PlayStation, on and on. And and I think that um, that you know, you, if you if you look at uh, at at these these kind of foundational technologies, over time they end up being used in, in far more use cases than, than were ever imagined at the beginning. You know, I mean, my, my phone is Android, which is running a Linux kernel, and you know, Linux powers so many different things. And I think that, that really OpenStack is, is not, I wouldn't, I don't you know, love the, the term like Linux of the cloud, but I think that it, it is a very broad technology like that that's meant to, uh, to kind of put a standard interface on all of the things that, that have to run in data centers. And that's that's a really really valuable proposition. If you uh, if you think about the the additional scale, the additional flexibility, the automation, the results that people like PayPal, eBay are getting by by cutting their provisioning times, by standardizing how their um, development teams can roll out products faster, all of those things really matter to uh, to businesses. It makes a big difference. And and you know, one of the what comments we got from one of the comments we got from Twitter from Craig Tracy um, was. The conversation here is, op is about enterprise, right? So a lot of yeah. um, industry conversation, but the voice of the customer. And, and he said, he said, "quote Again, we keep coming back to the operational aspects of OpenStack. Do we? He when do we hear the voices of the operators?" Yeah. And then you know, someone else comment. Oh, they're too busy operating to comment. <laughs> um, operations is a huge deal. I mean, yeah. DevOps is, is kind of what we talk about. So you you got the two worlds. Um, not much conversation on the panel about that. Where are we for operators? Are they feeling like the traction's there, there's a lot of questions from the audience around yeah. operational stability, um, scale, automation. Yeah. Can you comment on those areas? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the, the middle panel was all, was all a, a set of uh, people who were running uh, OpenStack and, uh, you know, in production. And the interesting thing is you had a service provider that was, uh, that was running a, a public cloud based on OpenStack. You had the guys from eBay, PayPal who are running a private cloud that, that powers, um, you know, a pretty significant percentage of their production environment. And they're running it, you know, from the uh, from the source code basically. And then you had um, Xerox Park, who's who's running an OpenStack appliance. And um, and so, you know, I think that uh, that that it shows that there are a lot of different ways to consume it. That's why there are not necessarily easy soundbite answers for some of the questions that, yeah. that people ask. We're early in the process, and people, it's an education process still for a lot of those things. Well, Jonathan, we got to get going. we got on a tight timeline, but yep. I do want to ask you one question about the Open Compute Summit. We were live yesterday all day. Dave and I were there yesterday. Um, that's a great open source kind of project for hardware. Um, what's your comments on that? Does that something that you embrace, OpenStack community look at and say, hey, we like that? Um, you know, I did point out, I mean, they're trying to commoditize the server business. So some people call it peanut butter and jelly, OpenStack and OCP. <laughs> yeah. You so see it that way? What's your take on it as yeah. the executive director? Well, so I think that, that, that open technologies are, are a great thing in every market. And so if you look at what Open Compute is doing, it's really at the layer you know, below OpenStack. It's at the hardware layer, not just in terms of servers, but actually data center design, cooling, all these kinds of things that, that um, really enable you to be able to run operational software like OpenStack and application software on top of that. So you know, it's the whole open from, from the, the dirt that the data center's built on all the way up to you know, the data that's coming out of it. I think that's a, it's, a, it's a great thing, and if you look you know, the Nebula um, appliance is, is based off of some OCP designs. IO Cloud is a service provider that just announced this week. Um, a, uh, they, they basically have a modularized data center that's OCP plus OpenStack. I think you'll see more of that. 
I think it's a great trend. It's still early with, with the Open Compute uh, project and the foundation, uh, but uh, Microsoft donated some kick, uh, some badass reference designs around their work in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So, uh, good stuff. We're here at OpenStack for the Enterprise, the OE Forum. OpenStack for the Enterprise Forum. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of the OpenStack Enterprise event. We'll be right back.